So a little bit more about the specifics of brain injury. It's estimated that approximately two and a half million people sustain a traumatic brain injury um, every year here in the United States. Um, and that about 2 million people happen to be treated and then released from the hospital um, or an emergency department. And a significant portion of those folks um, are mild traumatic brain injuries or what we call concussions. Um, it makes up approximately 75% of all the injuries that are seen and released at a hospital if they're even treated at the hospital. Um, basically, the individuals are um, seen in the emergency department and then let go um, and released to their homes. Only approximately 3% of all of these types of injuries um, result in death or um, are significant and severe enough to result in death. So as you can see, concussion is a pretty big um, epidemic or um, public health issue. And that's just the people that are actually seen in the hospital. It's important to remember that um, the incidence is the number of times that these injuries are occurring, but the prevalence is how common the um, injury is within a specific population. And unfortunately, a lot of people aren't even reporting concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries or even going into an emergency department to be diagnosed and then released um, until symptoms start to appear later on. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. Um, the brain injury itself is um, the most prevalent disability here in the United States. It's estimated that approximately 13 and a half um, million Americans or four and a half percent of our entire population are currently living with a brain injury. So they've had a clear diagnosis and been released and are home trying to um, live their lives after they've um, received an insult to the brain. Um, regarding the different mechanisms of injury, as we talked about a little bit earlier, um, it's extremely common after a fall. Um, the incidence and prevalence of brain injury and the different mechanisms of injury vary by age. Um, we see that um, a large number of um, individuals who are zero to four years old, I believe, are injured um, due to uh, violence and um, falls. And then we see a very similar pattern in the elderly. People that are 65 and older are more likely to be injured as the result of falls. Falls are actually now in the United States, the number one um, cause of traumatic brain injury. It used to be motor vehicle accidents and we were seeing a large portion of the population, um, 25 to 65 basically was our key demographic for traumatic brain injury and it was more common in males than females. However, with the aging population increasing, we are seeing uh, the numbers of people that are injured as a result of falls really increasing uh, throughout our population. Um, so our um, average age of injury is also going up. Um, a lot of the times um, with regard to mechanism, non-traumatic brain injury is the most common, um, obviously, is stroke. Um, it's a, either caused by a hemorrhage or a blood clot. Um, we see different types of brain injury due to infectious disease, such as encephalitis or meningitis. We also may um, see a seizure disorder, electric shock, or a lightning strike, um, which is not exactly common. Um, we see different types of brain injury due to tumors, um, which also may have secondary injuries due to the surgery removing the tumors, or the radiation or the chemotherapy that people are um, incurring as a result of these tumors. Um, different types of toxic ex exposure also cause acquired brain injuries, such as, and that includes substance misuse. Um, if someone is injured due to lead poisoning, such um, that's more common in children than adults. Um, if they're inhaling um, or huffing different types of 
um, volatile agents, um, that we see a big rise in, in the incidence in teenagers um, who are trying different types of inhaled um, substances. We also see acquired brain injury occurring due to metabolic disorders such as insulin shock in individuals with diabetes or a diabetic coma. Um, liver and kidney disease also has secondary consequences um, resulting in brain injury, acquired brain injury as well. You may see um, neurotoxic poisoning such as carbon monoxide uh, poisoning, which um, is also often results in one of those uh, in the 3% of the death cases that are seen due to neurotoxic poisoning. Um, it could also include inhalants. Um, there's a lot of workers' comp cases that have to do with different types of neurotoxic um, poisoning. And then also um, another mechanism for acquired brain injury, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is anoxic and hypoxic type brain injury, where there's a lack of oxygen to the brain causing um, brain damage. And that can happen due to cardiac arrest, um, different types of pulmonary diseases, um, strangulation we see as a result of domestic violence. Um, when um, people are near drowning, we see a lot of hypoxic um, type injuries. Um, the number one um, mechanism, as I did say, currently is falls, and it's due to the large aging population. Um, with regard to outcomes, um, persons with brain injury have a, redu a reduced life expectancy of approximately seven years um, compared to um, their peers in the community without traumatic brain injury. They're more at an increased risk of seizures and other comorbid conditions due to their brain injury. And that could include um, uh, different types of aspiration pneumonia. Um, that's actually the most common uh, study done by Harris and Felix and colleagues out of the traumatic brain injury model systems of care that are funded through the National Institutes on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation Research here in the United States, um, found that um, aspiration pneumonia occurred 40 time, 49 times more often in individuals with traumatic brain injury than in their peers who um, did not have traumatic brain injury history. Um, they were also 22 times more likely to um, incur seizure disorders. 12 times uh, more likely to incur septicemia and 29 times more likely to have circulatory problems after their brain injury than their peers who have not incurred a traumatic brain injury. Um, it's really not clear um, if, if the chronic damage is due to the traumatic brain injury or the traumatic insult itself, or it's just some sort of progressive injury or illness that these individuals might have been susceptible to before the brain injury. But um, basically, the TBI and the neurochemical cascade does cause additional um, comorbid uh, conditions, and it's more likely to occur in an individual with a brain injury than someone who hasn't had a brain or a history of brain injury in the past. So with regard to the different types of severity of traumatic brain injury, it's typically characterized into three levels of severity, which include mild, moderate, and severe. And as our talk today um, focuses a little bit more on the mild traumatic brain injury, um, they can have early um, either a brief or absolutely no loss of consciousness whatsoever. Um, Individuals with a mild traumatic brain injury may or may not experience post-traumatic amnesia. Um, symptoms of a mild traumatic brain injury include dizziness, vomiting, confusion, lethargy. Um, their Glasgow coma score would be in the range of a 13 to a 15, which is the maximum score you can get on a Glasgow coma score. And oftentimes with a mild traumatic brain injury, the imaging that um, is done, if any imaging is done at all, comes back and it looks pretty normal. Um, 
with regard to a moderate severe, moderate traumatic brain injury, a Glasgow coma score of nine to 12 um, is the range for that type of an injury. It's often diagnosed by a loss of consciousness for any period of time that includes 15 minutes to um, six hours um, under some definitions, 24 hours under other definitions, um, a period of post-traumatic amnesia between one and 24 hours. Some uh, scales look at it between one and seven days. Um, and a moderate injury often includes a skull fracture um, with a contusion or some type of a bleed, um, hemorrhage within the brain. It also may um, show up clearer on um, a CT scan or um, different types of findings on EEGs are more likely after a moderate brain injury. And then with regard to the severe injuries, this is the lowest end of the Glasgow coma score. It's basically anyone that incurs a Glasgow coma score of eight or below. And it's often characterized by a loss of consciousness greater than six hours on some scales, greater than 24 hours on other scales. Um, and then also uh, PTA or post-traumatic amnesia that on some scales is greater than 24 hours and some scales is more than seven days. And often um, you will have significant neurological findings on imaging, EEG. Um, it's not going to take a 7T MRI to uh, find um, effects of a severe traumatic brain injury. They're pretty significant on the um, lower end of the imaging scales. Um, today, as I said, we're going to focus more on the mild TBI and specifically concussion. And there, again, are a variety of different um, definitions out there for concussion. But the one I'm going to be discussing today is basically it's a mild traumatic brain injury with an alteration in mental status, which could be dazed, disoriented, confused. It may or may not involve a loss of consciousness. And that's something that is extremely important. A lot of people will say, oh, well, you didn't pass out. You didn't have a concussion, but that's not true. Um, concussions occur all the time without a loss of consciousness. Um, it can result in the loss of memory for events immediately before the concussion or immediately after the concussion. Um, and it can also result in uh, focal neurologic deficits or local neurologic deficits and often occurs um, and diffuse axonal injury often occurs as a result of concussion and it's very difficult to detect um, on neuroimaging, especially a CT scan. It's not strong enough to pick something up like that. Um, most concussions are not identified and they're not detected or treated. And therefore, um, we see a lot of concussions that go um, undiagnosed or underdiagnosed. So we really don't know um, specifically what the incidence and the prevalence of concussion are, but we do know that it's a significant um, public health um, issue. Um, as we start to review the mild traumatic brain injury or um, concussion, I want you to remember that um, a lot of the definitions of mild traumatic brain injury or concussions are based on um, symptoms that are ascribed to a mild TBI, um, and they may be due to non-brain injury phenomenon such as PTSD. Um, and you really want to, if you're treating individuals with mild traumatic brain injury or trying to detect, you want to be, um, have an increased attention to these type of factors. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that a concussion is a mild TBI and should be treated as a traumatic brain injury. Um, the cur the term concussion, um, is actually a commotion of the brain and it was derived back in the 16th century by Hippocrates and um, back in as far back as 1839, um, the physiological impact of mild traumatic brain injury had been described in different medical texts. Um, 
it has become extremely popular um, with the media and um, the general public since 1990. Um, a lot of studies have come to focus more on concussion and mild traumatic brain injury. It was brought to the forefront uh, due to the awareness of sports related concussions within the National Football League here in the United States uh, and the controversies that surround that. Um, all of the states here in the United States started passing um, concussion laws for youth sports um, and then also back in the 90s, all of the conflicts here in the United States um, with um, Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom and then Operation New Dawn, we saw a huge insurgent of um, individuals within the military who were occurring mild traumatic brain injuries. And that really focused a lot of attention on mild traumatic brain injury and a lot of the research funding and focus was to um, see if we can help those individuals coming back uh, to the states after they served and um, were experiencing severe symptoms due to their mild traumatic brain injuries. Um, the biggest part of the problem with mild traumatic brain injury nowadays is that there is no clear definition of concussion. Um, it's not a, um, or there's not a common definition. There are a multitude of different um, definitions so it's very difficult to compare apples to apples or concussion to concussion and study to study because guidelines are not in agreement. Identification, diagnosis, treatment, um, there's still a lot of gray area out there with regard to specific definitions of concussion. Excuse me. The most um, commonly used definition of concussion is the one that was developed by the American Congress of Rehabilitation Medicine in 1993. And that states that a patient with a mild traumatic brain injury is a person who has had a traumatic, traumatically induced physiological disruption to their brain function. Um, it's manifested as one of the following, any period um, of a loss of consciousness, any loss of memory for events prior, immediately before and immediately after um, the accident or the um, hit to the head, any alteration in mental state at the time of the, they say accident, but at the time of the insult to the brain, um, it could be if a person is feeling dazed, confused, disoriented, and any focal neurologic deficits that may or not may or may not be transient. So they can exist for a period of time after the insult to the head, or they may um, dissipate pretty quickly. Basically, um, the, under the ACRM, the American Congress of Rehabilitation Medicine definition, an individual um, the period of consciousness has less than um, 30 minutes long. And then after minutes, um, the initial Glasgow coma score of 13 to 15 um, would need to be um, scored. And then also they s determine that um, the length of PTA or post-traumatic amnesia has to be less than 24 hours as well. Um, since 1993 and ACRM's definition of mild traumatic brain injury, um, there have been a number of others who have tried to define or come up with a clear definition of mild traumatic brain injury and concussion. And um, the latest consensus statement came out in 2017 from the International Conference on Concussion in Sports that was held in Berlin. Um, in October of 2016, and that panel in Berlin modified the previous um, definition that says sports-related concussions are um, a traumatic injury induced by biomechanical forces. Um, they have several common features that may be utilized um, in clinically defining the nature of the concussive head injury, including um, Sports-related concussion um, can be caused by a direct blow to the head, face, 
or neck or elsewhere on the body with an impulsive force transmitted to the head. So if someone falls and um, there's a rotational injury or, you know, just the force of the fall itself could cause the brain to move with inside the skull and cause coup contra coup injury or again with the uh, frontal and temporal lobes uh, commonly hitting some bony prominence within the skull. Um, that's considered also um, a sports related concussion. Um, it typically results in the rapid onset of short lived impairments and that affects neurological functioning and um, that those short-lived impairments are seen to uh, resolve spontaneously. However, the signs and symptoms could evolve over a number of minutes to hours um, and may result in neuropathological changes. Um, the acute signs and symptoms basically reflect functional difficulties rather than structural injuries and um, they are, the Berlin conference says there's no abnormality that is seen on standard structural or, um, neuroimaging studies. Um, and then also it said, they said that their sports related concussions, um, result in a variety of different clinical symptoms and may not involve the loss of consciousness as we saw in the other definition of traumatic brain injury um, of the mild variety um, and that resolution of both the clinical and the cognitive um, functions seem to come in a sequential course, um, but some symptoms may be more prolonged than others. Um, and the clinical signs and symptoms can't be explained by drug use, alcohol use, medication use, or other injuries that may occur, such as a cervical injury, a peripheral vestibular type of an injury, um, or other comorbidities such as psychological problems or coexisting medical problems. Um, and there is clearly still a lot of work that needs to be done with regard to these definitions because they seem to be, um, while everyone seems to be having similar definitions, we're still not able to have one simple definition for concussion and mild traumatic brain injury that allows us to speak across multiple studies um, and compare data and really get a good handle on what this injury looks like and what the incidents and the prevalence are for mild traumatic brain injury overall. Um, with regard to the mechanisms, it's basically similar to the general brain injury mechanisms and the primary um, cause of mild traumatic brain injury or concussion includes the acceleration, acceleration, deceleration type of an injury, um, striking a, your head against a hard surface, um, blasts, explosions, or being hit in the head. Um, for example, um, personal case, my daughters both play water polo. And unfortunately, the younger one who was a freshman last year got railed in the head with a water polo ball and couldn't figure out wh what she was doing after the game and clearly had a concussion by being struck in the head um, just by being hit in the head with a ball. So it's, they could occur from acceleration, deceleration injuries with coup contra coup um, occurring within the brain. It could be hitting your head against something common in diving accidents, common in bike accidents if someone falls off a bicycle or a horse um, and hits their head on the floor. And even in sports uh, related concussion, tackling and the head hits the floor or um, in soccer, if people um, accidentally go up to head the ball together and um, hit their heads together, um, that's often a common um, mild traumatic brain injury or concussion mechanism as well.